Hello and welcome, everyone. You're listening to The Crack. This is the podcast where I ask you, what's the crack? So what's the crack, guys? How are you getting on? What's been happening? It's been over two weeks since the last episode. And you know when that is? I have no concept of time. But I do now. I'm back from out of space. No, I'm... Uh, hello. Yeah, so I'm in the flat. I've got some time to myself. So I'm spending it with you. How you doing? How you being? What's up? Yeah, I am um, coming to you live from. <laughs> yeah, coming to you live. No, I am. Um, so it's Saturday, and I've not been at work. I've been helping my friend. Um, might have told you on this before. Might not have. I don't know. I don't listen back. Um, he's building a house, so I'm helping when I can. You know, he's not just on his own. He's his wife, and his father-in-law, and his brother, and another friend, and another friend. Uh, but we don't all help at the same time, but today I was there, and it was good. It's all coming together, getting the house up. But today I uh, learned that <laughs> uh, I don't really care for heights, but I don't care about heights. It's a lot of not caring. I shall explain. So the house is not a bungalow which means there are stairs. And we were on the... What Americans would call the second floor, but in Britain, it's the first floor. No, hang on, hang on, hang on a second. So it's in Britain, the first floor is the ground floor. I was on the part of the house that will be the upstairs. And, uh, bam. We have to put beams in to get the roof on. That's all fine, so we did it on one side, and uh, it was all going well, and the flooring's down. Like, there's uh, not carpeted or anything, but there's wooden planks that are down, so you can walk. And we had scaffolding on that, and we're pretty high up. And the beam we're putting in slotted perfectly downward. Like, we lifted it up, we're on the scaffolding, stood up, got the beam up there, lifted it up, moved it over. It's these little metal frame sort of socket type things. There's actually a name for them, but I'm ignorant. And then we, it went in perfect flash. Bam, wham, bam. Thank you, ma'am. You know, it's looking good. All right, cool. Did some more work. And then, okay, let's do the other side. Well, whew, uh, brought the scaffolding over. And the floor hasn't been put in on that side so you can see right down right down to the concrete quite far below hmm I don't think I like this <laughs> the metal things for the beam the you know, socket things or whatever they're called unlike the first side they were in at an angle I don't know I'm demonstrating here in person but I'm not on camera so they were askew they were Squint, if you like. And, uh, hmm, it's a challenge. So I got up in the scaffolding, and the gentleman I was helping was explaining, okay, so if you go up on your knees on the scaffolding, because it's quite low down where we had to put the beam, and then wrap your arm around the other beam there. So my left arm is like wrapped up like a fucking tentacle <laughs> around this bit of wood. And he goes, what we're going to do is we're going to lift it up, out and then bring it in at an angle. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. Um, we got it done, but I didn't dig it. <laughs> so that was that was my day, and I got fucking soaking, soaking, soaking wet. Um, I wore a hoodie. I'm wearing it now, but it was dried. Yeah, so I went in the morning. I was there for nine. Um, still half an hour away, so turned up waterproof jacket in my car and it's the same waterproof jacket I bring fishing and it's from one of my first jobs job at high school when I worked at a theme park in the woods which involved working at heights but when you worked there you're always in a harness and roped up and tied up and you know you were staring down at concrete and like okay if I go down there that's uh it's 25 foot of ouch yeah so I've still got that jacket and it is bone dry because it was in my car the whole fucking time. That was nice. So I'm coming to you. I'm coming to you live. I'm not in the shower yet. <laughs> live and unwashed. Gross. 
Yeah, that'll be, that'll be the name of the podcast. I'm Morst. Lewis live and I'm Morst. That's my surname. See if I can edit that out. Right, yeah, so. What have we been up to? It's been two weeks. I should probably have had some stories or something. Not a terrific amount, to be honest. Um, yesterday was lovely. Another day off. Uh, got a message in the morning from my sister. You working? No. Do you want to look after the kids? It's my nieces. You know, I've never really just hung out with them. So yeah, yeah, cool. Bring them around. So she did. She went to go and do her errands. Ooh. Sorry, I'm tired. And I mentioned I was uh, helping build a house. My job involves sitting down for like 12 hours straight. So I haven't actually do physical labour. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah, my sister brought around the nieces. And uh, I just started hanging out with them for a few hours. I was like, alright, cool, won't you? What are you guys into? <laughs> you know, you can't really... Uh, you want to go for a coffee and talk about work, or... You guys got a mortgage, or... No. Went to McDonald's, that was cool. They don't order Happy Meals. They're, they're they're only wee, but they... Or maybe I just fucked up. They're only tiny wee kids, but... They know what they want in a McDonald's. They got a burger, a coffee, because I'm... Boring adult, and they had all kinds of... Wacky things. Although my... One of the nieces... <laughs> what would you like? Uh, cheeseburger. Okay. So I said, you know, you order on these big um, touch screen, fucking four foot screen things. Said, cheeseburger. Okay. So it's like burgers. Open up, scroll down, scroll down. Cheeseburger. It's about to select it, and below it, there's a double cheeseburger. Turn to her. You like a double cheeseburger? It's two burgers in the one. I never knew you got that. Well, you can get one today. At the basket. Yeah. I didn't tell her there's a triple cheeseburger. Alright, you gotta leave that for the future. Yeah. <laughs> Shall discover that one day. Also, McDonald's, you don't get triple cheeseburgers as a meal. So, no thank you. And the other one, she knew what she wanted. She wanted a specific thing. And she wanted a specific fucking ingredient removed. <laughs> okay. And yeah, I mean, they're tiny wee kids, but they're still, like, people. So I was like, when are you guys going to go upstairs and find a table? All right. And they ran off. And I was... And so I looked back after them, like, should I have... I don't know if I should have done that, you know, that's them. No, they'll be fine. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. When I was a kid, me and my sister, uh... We'd go on, like, family holiday, and my mum, my dad, my sister, and I, uh, we'd go on holidays. And if my parents had enough of us, they would, um, well, this is illegal, they, they, they would leave us in the hotel room, uh, I guess, like, at KFC or something, and leave us in, and they'd go out and go for dinner and hang out. And that was before the Madeleine McCann shit. So, um, different times, you know, and I, I don't know, like, What's your point? No, like, give kids independence. Let them go and find the fucking table in McDonald's. You know, because there's some folk who are... And I've, I've seen it, guys. I've seen it. You know, you go into, you go into websites and there's... Well, there's one I use called it, or Reddit. R-E-D-D-I-T. People post questions and it prompts discussions. Um, but also, if you like a specific fucking subject you can find that but yeah so you go into this one it'll be like um my daughter's friend wants her to come over for a sleepover i don't think i but i would like to have my daughter go away does anyone let their kids have sleepovers anymore what the fuck why why wouldn't you let your kid have a sleepover probably because of pedos but you know oh, everyone's a pedo no some fucker i used to go to school with he's in prison now for being a pedophile it was in my years, a few years above me. He used to live nearby me. And I found that out, it greatly upset me. I didn't like that at all. Scary. Anyway, let's keep this light. So, yeah. <laughs> McDonald's was tasty. Um, was it good? Not particularly. And then what do we do? We went to this garden centre near here that's got uh, fish for sale. 
but not just like goldfish. We're talking Finding Nemo, clownfish, bluefish, greenfish, redfish. No, they got all kinds of fish. Uh, sometimes they sell frogs and prawns. Not for eating. Not sure. Not sure like. Like the one in Shark Tale. They didn't need to get a job because this one didn't have any arms or legs. If that made any sense to you, you probably understood the reference. The film called Shark Tale. There's a prom. Well, this 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 garden center sells, uh, sells prawns, among other things. Uh, we went there. And happy October, guys. Yeah, spooky month. They had all their Halloween stuff out. By all their Halloween stuff, I mean, they had this tiny little section because the rest of it's all fucking Christmas. And the whole place was decked out. Decked the whole... Whew, all Christmassy stuff. So I was kind of like, uh, what the fuck is this? But we went to go look at the fish. And we did. Free aquarium. For a pound, you can... Uh, put a pound in a thing, twist the thing, and then fish food comes out. Can we do that, Uncle Lewis? No. I don't have a pound. And even if I did, I would lie. Because the fucking pet shop's not going to let them fucking starve. It's not a pet shop, sorry, the garden centre. And yeah, we were looking at the fish and then... Fucking browsing all the Christmas stuff. Jesus Christ. October 11th, guys. And this, uh... This garden centre, they have animatronic animals that sing Christmas songs if you push a button. But not just animals. At one point, there is a big giant teddy bear and uh, an owl. Oh, wait a minute. What's that song about them riding away in a boat? No, that's an owl and a pussycat. No relevance at all to this. Yeah. And so there's a, there's an owl and a, and a teddy bear. They sing a song and then you go around. And look at the bobbles. And then there's yetis. They sing a song. So when he says, can I push the button? Please, God, fucking don't. Yeah, of course you can. So she did. And they started singing a Christmas song. And we're watching them. And they tried to walk away, the kids. And I, no, 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 no. If you push the button, you have to watch. That's what you get. You embarrassed? Good. And these yetis are, you know, with their empty eyes looking left and right. <laughs> My mouth's not really moving to the music. And I oldest niece goes, uh... Like, word for word, she goes, um, they're creepy. I wouldn't want to come here in the day and then at night see them in my dreams. Well, that's pretty fucking intense. <laughs> She's not wrong, though. They were creepy as shit. Yeah. What was the day with the nieces? That was fine. That's good. That's good. Yeah. What the hell else have I been up to? Surely not for it. I've been doing more than that. Working nine to five. I wish. Yeah. Oh, I surprised your fucking Mister Romance over here. Um, didn't feel like cooking because I'm lazy. I get tired. So I just messaged her at work, and where she works is um near the road. <laughs> she's a traffic light. No, she's not. So she works near the road that takes you to Nairn. And Nairn? Nairn? It's the fastest place in Scotland or some joke. Because Nairn... Yeah, anyway. It's also right by the water. It used to be a fishing town. Now it's a town. By the Saintsbury. Anyway, I messaged her and I said, Do you want fish and chips for tea? Do I? Yeah, she did. So I was like, alright, cool, cool, cool. Tell me when you're done. I'll take... The dog, El Mexican, Chica, and we'll come and pick you up from work. Take you to Nairn, get you dinner, and then on the way back, we'll go back and buy your work. You can get your car, woman, and drive yourself home. I didn't say it quite like that, but that was the, uh, you know, that's the contact. Okay, cool. So I waited. I waited. She never seen me fucking finishing work. So I got in the car, mm-hmm. drove to work, and I sat in the car park in the dark. So, hmm. I have a book in the back. So I, you know, reached into the back of the car, turned the light on, got the book. Book was too scary, and I stopped reading. You know, reading a scary book in the dark. Not good. Not good. I don't do that anymore. Don't read scary books in the dark. Speaking of which, I saw the Salem's Lot movie. Didn't dig it. Well, that's not true. I did. There's just aspects I didn't like. 
Sorry, I was rocking back and forth in my chair there. I got far away from the microphone. <laughs> I'm back. Yeah, sorry, it's rocking my chair. Around the Christmas tree. Jesus, fuck. No, 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 it's not Christmas. So I'm at Charlotte's work, and she's never finishing work. I'm bored as shit in the dark. So like, okay, cool. I could always just rub Vaseline in my nipples. I didn't, but I could have, you know, I mean, I didn't have Vaseline, but I do have nipples. And took the wee dog for a walk around the car park. It was fun. Then eventually Charlotte finished work. She, she's like, you ready? Am I ready? I'm, yeah. <laughs> no, we we got to go back to the flat. Yeah, so... Where are we going? <laughs> oh my, I don't know, a fucking fish and chip shop in Nairn. Where, where's good? Mm-hmm. All right, cool. To the phone. Doo-doo-doo-doo. Google. It was at half past eight. So. It's ten past eight, so. Pedal to the metal. We fucking flew to Nairn. And on the way in, I'm like, okay, so one of them closes at eight o'clock. The only one I know of closes at eight o'clock, and that's called the Dolphin. It's a fish and chip shop. Okay, cool. What about this place across here? That's called Pizza something. I don't think it's a chippy. Oh, okay. So we parked the car and uh, rip it to the car park. Fish and chips. Oh my god. Just lying on the ground? No, no, no. That's an actual takeaway. So we went in. Closes half past eight. But, uh, <laughs> buddy, it's 22 minutes past. Sorry. We ordered our food. Um, <laughs> just gotta tell this part because Charlotte's, uh, in the wrong. And uh, <laughs> where we parked the car is opposite a big co op which opens till 10. Cool. You know what a co op is? Sure. It's a shop. It sells things. And we're in the chip shop and Charlotte orders her food. What would I like? I order mine. Fashion chaps. And the guy says, You like anything else? Charlotte goes, Oh, a bottle of water. So immediately I'm like, Ugh! Cool up right over there. Didn't say it, but you know. Mr. Tightwad over here. Look, I'll take you out for dinner, but you want water? No. <laughs> well, you fish. Yeah. Um, and the guy says to her, oh, Okay, uh, do you want a plastic bottle or glass? Now, guys, Charlotte is adamant that she did not say glass. However, I heard her say glass, and the man serving us heard her say glass, because she responded glass, and I like, you know, nearly fucking had an aneurysm, <coughs> a glass bottle of water, you know, I didn't say anything, just sort of like, ooh, weird choice, didn't think she would ever want that from a chippy, and the guy went, oh, okay, brunch, sat down. Why did he bring me glass? I asked for plastic. Why did you ask for water? There's a fucking co-op right across the road. Okay, cool. So we got our food. Charlotte's adamant. She didn't ask for a glass bottle of water. Maybe she didn't, but maybe I and Mr. Chip Shop Man were tripping balls because we both heard her say glass bottle. So, yet to be proven, along with Bigfoot and Nessie, did Charlotte ask for a glass bottle of water. Anyway, we go back to the car. And we just sat in silence. Can't believe you. No, no. and I said, where would you like to go and eat this? And she was ready to fucking tear into her food, but um, that would have be been impolite, because I was not eating. I had to drive. Oh, there's the harbour. Like, yeah, that'd be nice. We can go and <laughs> we go and look at the water. Now, guys, if you're familiar with this part of the world, at half past eight at night, in the early days of October it gets dark about half six so we still went we drove down to the harbour parked right up against the where you where you would get a lovely view and we sat in the dark staring at the darkness eating our chippy dinner and I really enjoyed it but um, not quite the summer scenic view you know oh maybe we'll see dolphins I'm not going to see fuck all. Could be a fucking escape lunatic with a hook standing outside the car. We wouldn't know he blissfully eat our chips. Mm, this is very nice. Yeah. And then afterwards we went to Sainsbury's because they have that in there and it's fancy. 
It's a step below Marks and Spencer's, but <laughs> it's a bit above Tesco, you know what I mean? So that's all the same shit. It was fine. It was all good. And is that everything I've done the past two weeks? You know, I fucking hope not, because I surely to God I do more than that. I went into town at some point, and I was in HMV. Hmph. <laughs> And when I was about 12 years old, I was a little hipster fuck, and I really got into <laughs> uh, records. Sorry, I just got a message from Charlotte. I've just finished. Okay, cool. I want a Chinese. Uh, I really got into LPs, records. You know, because why not? Of course, <laughs> of course you would. What you meant to do. So I got a record player for Christmas, and then what I would do with every spare cash I got is I go around charity shops and I buy LP records or singles if they sold them but it's, I don't know if you know what fucking vinyl singles look like they're small and charity shops back then were fucking see it was basically 20 years ago which is kind of fucked up but they had so many records they couldn't get rid of them there was boxes and boxes and boxes so I'm on, you're talking 20p 50p one pound and I've still got these LPs somewhere I think they're in my parents attic but um, Queen Greatest Hits Beatles Albums um, ACDC albums, fucking, basically if there's the fucking 60s, 70s, 80s, even in the 90s, records, I'd have found it at a charity shop at some point and bought it, and I had a fantastic selection of records, um, and then every now and again I'd splurge and buy a more recent modern LP, and then, I don't know, I don't know when, it was when I got a double bed. <laughs> um, so that would been 17, 18, because I had the record player on a big table in my room, and then when the double bed came along, <laughs> I had more important things to do than listen to records. <laughs> so that, that went into the attic, along with the LPs. So yeah, that was a while ago as well. And, you know, just got on with life. A CD player. And that was all good. And that's the end of the story. So thanks for listening, guys. No. And I was in HMV the other day. And they said, I don't know if you've been in there in a fucking while, but it's not the HMV you used to know. Now it's all like Japanese toys and like, it's even like Korean sweeties, and anime and manga stuff. All that sort of arty things. Stuff I'm not really into. I mean, I liked Pokemon when I was wee, but I never got into all of it. And they sell t-shirts. And they do still sell DVDs. If you can find them, good luck. It's like a quest. But they sell a lot of LPs now. LPs seem to be making a comeback. So, <laughs> well, where were you 20 years ago, guys, when it really mattered? No, that's fine. That's cool. I was having a browse of the records, and I have most of them. But I got them in charity shops. And so... Th- What's your point? Okay, no, the point is, right? Queen Greatest Hits. You probably had that CD in your house growing, you know, that and Abba Gold. You know, your parents had a copy of that CD. It's the, it's like a black cover album. You got Queen posing on the front, Freddie Mercury at the front, and uh, I think he's in like a black leather jacket, and everyone else sort of standing behind him as Freddie sits down. Queen Greatest Hits. Opening track is uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, and the closing track, track 17, I think, We Are the Champions. Queen Grace says Volume 1, sorry, because there's a Volume 2 and Volume 3. So my Grace says Volume 1, and I got that for 99p. Now, in HMV, <laughs> to buy it new, with the exact same fucking music and songs, and maybe it's been remastered, I don't know, but the one I had sounded fine, £39.99. Guys, £39. As a Frampton Comes Alive, 1976. That's my parents' attic. I got that on fucking eBay or Amazon for like under a fiver. £39.99. Oasis albums. Fucking ACDC albums. Amy Winehouse. These these are all in charity shops. Got a phone call from Charlotte. Oh dear. Bear with me. And we're back. Charlotte is on her way home. I told her I was doing the podcast. She panicked, but... She wants it to be known, everybody. She just passed three rabbits. I don't know if it's an omen or something, so... Where was I? 
buy your LPs in a charity shop. <laughs> if you can take anything away from this podcast, anything at all in the fucking hundred or whatever episodes, there you go. Buy an LP in a charity shop. Yeah. I got a fantastic, fantastic mint condition meatloaf bat out of hell from the 70s, I think 1977. I got an amazing pressing of that. But I got it at a market in Barcelona. That's how you might pronounce it, I don't know why. Yeah, so it's all Spanish. Not the, mu- <laughs> not, not the music. That'd be cool. We're rooted. That'd be awful. No, um... What's my point? Yeah, buy your records in that charity shop, guys. If they still sell them, I don't know. But don't buy your books in charity shops. What the fuck's going on there? Because I always go and have a browse of the books. So we find the good stuff. And... So this other podcast that I'm planning on doing, which is fucking oh, ever ticking closer. <sighs> Still not done the Banshee stuff yet. Jesus Christ. Why did I give myself deadlines? I don't know. Um, I want to do an episode about the Highland Clearances. So there's a book I wanted by John Preble. And I read his Culloden book for the Culloden Battlefield episode. And he did one of the Highland Clearances. And I'm like, holy shit, because Highland Clearances is a massive part of Scottish history and now it's shaped how we are now and everything. Cool. So I found out the charity shop. Mm, £10. So this is a charity shop. And I looked around at the north, to be fair, it wasn't. See, Oxfam. Bit of a snobby charity shop. Very expensive for books. I'm not paying over like £2 for a book in a charity shop, guys. Not happening. I don't know whose fucking hands have held those books. I don't know whose eyes have scanned those fucking words. You know? What else have those eyes seen? You don't know. It's chilling. You don't know what the fuck's going on out there. So what's the point of this episode, guys? Right, buy your LPs in a charity shop, but for your books, write your own. I don't know. Just don't spend too much in a charity shop on books, because they don't fucking... Who they think they are. A friend of mine, she was telling me, maybe in Germany, um, she was in like a charity shop that sold books, but they sold it by the uh, size. What? So you'd go up to the counter with all the books you wanted to buy and they put them against like a ruler. And then there were set prices with each millimetre or whatever. Anyway, all right, cool. Shall we call it there? I think we will. So, guys, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, we're done. All right. Go and have a good day. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much, um, Blackmail, for the theme song. Thank you, Cora, for your artwork, for giving us the logo. Thank you, dear listener. Okay, uh, it means a lot that you're giving me your time. It means a lot. Um, so does Plethora. Now... If you want to get in touch, there's a website, www.thecrackpodcast.co.uk, and I'll say it again, www.thecrackpodcast.co.uk. So we contact tab. I don't put a lot on that website. There's a recipe on there now for... What the fuck was it for? Something. Well, tomato sauce. Yeah, I made a, I made a spicy Italian sauce. That was good. So I wrote the recipe on there, because I'm the shit of the world. You can check that out. You don't have to. I don't give a shit. Um, made a good soup the other day as well. Fuck yeah, that was good. Oh, that's interesting. Is a recipe on there? Recipe's not on there, guys. Soup's not hard. Put whatever the fuck you want in the big pan. Okay? Like, I'm not even kidding. Anything you want. Cook it. And then you just fill the pan with water and put in some stock cubes. How much? How much you fucking want? It's... The... Oh. Easiest fucking food in the world. Soup I made. Put a pack of smoked bacon that chopped the little bits in there. Stirred that up. Put some butter. Then that was cooked. Added some onions, carrots, leeks. Then that was cooked. Added some sweet potato, some lentils. Filled the pan up with uh, cold water. Put in some... What did I put in? One pork stock cube and uh, two veg. Man, easy as that. Put two fucking bay leaves into it, turn it to a boil and give it like, I don't know, two hours to boil on a gentle simmer. And then I blitz the fuck out of it and I love using that blitzer. Right, yeah, I wasn't kidding. End of the episode. You, until next time. <laughs> until next time. 
as always, you look after yourself. Be good to each other. Don't take any shit. But just be good. Alright, I'll speak to you next time, guys. Bye for now.